All right, so we're going to talk about the immune system in these series of videos. I'm going to sort of introduce things in this first video, and I'm going to talk a lot more about the specific or the acquired immune system in the second video. So I just want to uh, think about subdividing the immune system into two broad groups. We can think about things or, or, or mechanisms your body has to defend against threats non-specifically. So sort of mechanisms that broadly protect your body against maybe a spectrum of pathogens um, without um, specifically attacking a, a particular type of pathogen. I'm going to further subdivide this into external defenses, so sort of um, strategies that block the, the pathogens from getting into your bloodstream to begin with. And I'll also talk about internal defenses, so um, what defenses exist sort of inside your bloodstream or sort of more around your body. Um, I'm going to define anything as external as being outside your bloodstream, so um, once I get to that discussion, you'll see that I even define sort of the inside of your breathing tube and digestive tube as sort of functionally outside your body, external to your body, because it's sort of outside of your bloodstream. There are also specific or, or sometimes this is called the acquired immune system as well. Um, all of these are sort of um, part of your internal or, or sort of bloodstream area. And I'm going to say a lot more about these guys in the second video. So let's just uh, think about some external non-specific defenses first. Um, your most basic defense you have against pathogens is your intact skin. Uh, skin serves many functions, and one of the things that it does well is it uh, skin cells are very tightly combined together, um, which basically makes the gap in between them zero, so pathogens can't slip really um, in between skin cells or through them very effectively at all in order to get into the bloodstream. So intact skin is a very good way of preventing pathogens from getting access to your bloodstream. If you've ever seen somebody with, say, a cut or maybe even an infected wound before, um, you would know that when the skin is broken, however, that uh, pathogens can kind of slip into the capillaries of your blood and potentially cause infection that way. Um, so sometimes you've got to be a little bit more careful if you have a cut on your hands or your skin, especially if you're going to be a medical professional. So there are also external defenses in the other um, um, places external to your bloodstream. Uh, we have to interact with our environment. We can't simply have skin cover over our entire body. Uh, we obviously have to let light in through our eyes, but that kind of creates an increased risk of pathogen infection in our eyes. Um, same with our ears for sound. Uh, we have to breathe through our mouth and nose. We have to eat food and send it down through a digestive tube. So, you know, fundamentally we're interacting with our environment in different ways, and that just sort of creates um, uh, avenues for pathogens to get in. Um, fortunately, a lot of these areas have additional defenses as well. Um, what I'm showing here are a set of, of cells lining your respiratory tube that can really do two things. They can kind of secrete this thick mucus um, um, substance that sort of traps pathogens. And then uh, the cells are also equipped with these cilia here that sort of beat the, the, the mucus substance um, back up your respiratory system rather than down to your alveoli. So I know it seems gross when you think of, of how um, uh, clogged up with mucus you might get on occasion, but really you'd rather have that mucus there with the pathogens trapped inside of it than, um, say, deep inside of your respiratory system. So um, you have additional defenses. Stomach acid is another quick example. Stomach acid can um, destroy a lot of pathogens coming through the digestive system, um, though not all. So there are internal defenses as well, because if you imagine that we have quite a few ways of trying to block pathogens from coming in, you can imagine that those pathogens would have co-evolved in order to find ways to slip around those defenses. So we have additional defenses inside. Um, we can broadly think of the white blood cells as being the defenders, the, the uh, constituents of the overall immune system. But we can div uh, further subdivide the white blood cells into two broad groups. I'm just going to use the word phagocytes to talk about all of the cells that you have that non-specifically try to deal with threats. So they can recognize maybe a particular group of, of pathogenic particles like viruses, like bacteria, like worms, like fungus, uh, fungi. So 
they can just sort of recognize a broad spectrum of those guys, and they're going to try and destroy them directly, um, usually through phagocytosis, taking them in, or, or otherwise releasing um, um, enzymes to try and attack them. So nonspecific phagocytes, and then another group of, of white blood cells are lymphocytes, um, and those are part of the specific or acquired system. I'm going to be talking about them a lot more in part two of, of the video. And just to introduce, we're eventually going to further subdivide lymphocytes into three broad groups, B lymphocytes, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and helper T lymphocytes, and we'll want to talk about what they all do eventually. So again, we're just focused on the nonspecific mostly in this uh, first video. So here's a uh, just a basic model of how a phagocyte might um, take in, this looks like a bacterial cell through endocytosis, uh, phagocytosis more specifically. Um, you would imagine that phagocytes would have lots of lysosome organelles that would then fuse with the vesicle that contains the bacterium, um, releasing digestive enzymes that maybe break up the bacterium, and maybe it just sort of then releases the uh, particles um, um, are sort of the constituent uh, components that are no longer dangerous. Although I will just briefly say that there are specialized phagocytes that actually mount pieces of the digested bad guy or pathogen on its cell membrane. So it can not only destroy bad guys, but it can sort of almost um, effectively kind of um, display information about what it just destroyed. I just destroyed something and it looked like this. Um, we're going to see in part two that that's going to be particularly helpful in activating the specific immune system, um, and we'll see how that works later. So just um, in very brief summary here, we've kind of started to introduce the immune system. Um, we've mostly focused on nonspecific defenses here. Your book will discuss far more types of nonspecific defenses. You are welcome to read about the inf inflammation response, about natural killer cells, about interferons, about the complement system. Um, I'm just not going to worry about them for the purposes of our, our course. Um, I mostly focused here on basic external defenses, both outside your body, skin, and um, internal tubes, mucus, and um, acid defenses. Um, and then we also briefly talked about phagocytes and the internal defenses um, in your bloodstream, destroying organisms by finding them and trying to swallow them and digest them through um, enzymatic hydrolysis.